All right, this is John Cola with OKRaw.com to do have another exciting episode for you. Coming at you from my garden in the morning here uh, in July. It was just the 4th of July. I'm glad no rogue fireworks caught my garden or house on fire. I did just put new, like, wood chips down, which are all highly flammable. <laughs> but anyways, uh, yeah, we're sitting next to my amazing tree collared slash dinosaur kill cross. I love this guy. He's just thriving in a hundred plus degree weather. I think it was like 109 yesterday. So anyways, today we're answering your guys' questions. If you do have a question for me, I'll post a link down below to my community tab where you can ask your question that will be considered for next month's Q&A. I apologize I don't respond to comments because I don't have time to like view comments and read comments and respond to comments because I'm always doing so many things in my life. All right, so let's get on to this month's Q&A. So first question is from Leah Preen 7347. Do you have recommendations for devices to vacuum seal mason jars and freezer items? I see you cannot buy BioChef in the USA. So, I mean, number one, I don't really recommend the BioChef pump. I think it is a very overpriced pump. Plus, my BioChef uh, relationship soured. I don't even know if they're even in business anymore, and they do not support their warranties. Uh, and I don't recommend a company that operates in that fashion. So, I mean, the easiest thing I would say is you want to go to my Amazon shop. I have links in my Amazon shop for the different vacuum pumps and lids you could use on mason jars, which is my favorite way to vacuum seal things. I also have some links down there to buy the a vacuum seal bag so you could like freeze bananas and other things in your freezer so it doesn't get freezer burn and will stay good without oxidizing for example i actually put a bunch of frozen bananas in my parents uh, freezer because i ran out of freezer space like a year ago like now because it was like last uh maybe it was like september and it's like we we're here in july and they're still good they look they look like the day i put them in there you know and of course, I have options for low, low budget models and I have options for, you know, the better ones with better valves in there. That being said, uh, soon coming, not yet released, there'll be a pure uh, juicer vacuum pump, which will be the best vacuum pump because it's going to pull the most vacuum and seal mason jars. So he has a whole system for sealing things in mason jars. Uh, there will be a Kickstarter on that. But if you're subscribed to my YouTube channels, especially the OK Raw or the Discount Juicers, I will have specific videos because that's going to be actually the best solution uh, so far because it's very easy to pump compared to most vacuum pumps that are out there. All right, next question is from I'm in my garden. Yes, yeah, so am I. All right, do you eat any plain herbs for strictly medicinal uses, John? I pluck herbs from my garden for things like gassiness, sore throat, headaches, antiperspirant. I hope little Oakley is doing better. All right, so, you know, for strictly medicinal uses like if i have a sore throat i don't know i don't go to my garden and just like pluck herbs i think i may pluck like some uh mint if i want to have fresh breath but like i don't know i don't like i don't usually get gassiness and if i do have gassiness like it's to be expected because i probably just took some inulin powder <laughs> and it just like i don't know and it doesn't bother me it's like gas to me is natural I don't, I rarely ever get sore throats. If I do, actually, I, I get this stuff called, uh, I get a, I have a special like uh, herbal mouthwash actually that I'll gargle with. Um, and in addition, what I will do is then I will also take some uh, mouth probiotics. So I have beneficial mouth probiotics that'll kill the bad bacteria that's probably causing a sore throat. Antiperspirant, like I, I don't wear any antiperspirant because I think we should perspire. <laughs> And yeah, luckily I don't, I don't tend to stink too much when I do perspire. Um, I rarely ever get headaches these days, and, but I wouldn't necessarily like, you know, use some herbs, like if I had a headache. I will say I have used like herbal supplements for specific issues when I have something going on because I'd rather do herbal supplements in a supplement form that I didn't grow myself or not fresh because it is concentrated than say like a drug. Um, but yeah, so like I don't necessarily eat plain herbs strictly for medicinal uses. However, I do grow medicinal herbs and I will add them for culinary uses. And of, of course, also the medicinal uses um, when I create, when I eat, when I make my food. So like I'll use medicinal herbs in there in small doses. So I'll get some of those properties into me. So hopefully I just can live healthy 
without having headaches, without having all these other things going on, so that I need herbal remedies. So, yeah, that's my goal. All right, next question is from the BGB. Hi, John, I bought a Santa 727 juicer from you earlier this year. I love the juicer. However, I notice my stomach is upset after drinking my morning green juice. What can I do to avoid this? I use only vegetables in my juice, romaine, celery, cucumber, and drink only six to eight ounces a day. I drink the juice first and then immediately eat my breakfast. Thanks for your suggestions. Wow, that's really interesting. So you use a nice recipe that actually I recommend on my YouTube channel, romaine, celery, and cucumber. That's a very mild tasting juice. Like I, I pound like a quart of that every single day, like no stomach upset. It does you know, go through me pretty quickly. And then I'm hungry actually rather quickly after that because it's basically very low calories as well. But glad you're doing that. So, I mean, stomach upset, what is that caused by? So, I mean, if you've never juiced before in your life and now all of a sudden you're used to eating your regular breakfast and then you're adding a juice in, your body's freaking out. It's going, what are these juices? What are these vegetables that you never used to eat because you always eat bacon and eggs? I don't know what you're eating. Or you always eat oatmeal and you've never done these juices. So, you know, your body may be going through some kind of reactions. I'm not really exactly sure what's going on. Of course, uh, you know, if you are having other medical issues, go see a doctor because I'm not one. But what I could tell you is if I had stomach upset and I drank a juice, I would, number one, I mean, because number one, I don't get stomach upset from a juice. So if I did have a juice that gave me stomach upset, I would immediately think, are my vegetables contaminated with something? Uh, you know, did they have E. coli on them or something? So I want to ask, you know, hopefully your vegetables aren't, no, doesn't have any kind of bad bacteria, E. coli, that's probably ruled out. However, you know, are you buying organic produce items? You know, that would be number one. Hopefully you're juicing organic, uh, you know, conventional produce items may have a lot of pesticides, which, you know, when we concentrate them in juices may cause stomach upset. That's probably not a very likely occurrence. But another maybe occurrence that would maybe more be possible is if you're using like standard market more cucumbers, market more cucumbers have a skin that are kind of bitter. And I would think that some of those bitter compounds and a person that is not adjusted to them may cause more stomach upset. That is another potential reason for stomach upset. For that reason, that's why I recommend juicing things like English cucumbers or Persian cucumbers, not the standard market more cucumbers that, you know, near me sometimes on sale six for a dollar. Organic ones, usually just the standard ones, market more cucumbers. They have that like kind of funky skin I hate. Actually, I put some in my salad the other night and I peeled them. Um, but, when I, but when I juice them, I'll juice them actually because I don't care about the bitterness. Actually, I think that's a good thing. But this also may cause stomach upset. So um, let's see. Another reason for stomach upset is you're just, your body's just not used to it. So what I would write, rec might recommend, because you're only doing six to eight ounces a day, which is not a whole lot, I would say... Um, half that, see if that does, see if that, you know, rectifies the stomach upset. Um, another thing I would rec uh, recommend is diluting it. So take the eight ounces and then dilute it with water, another eight ounces. So now you have diluted juice, right? And then drink that to see if that helps the stomach upset. Now, the other thing that may be causing the stomach upset that you alluded to is that you drink the juice first and then you immediately eat your breakfast, so maybe just the juice is reacting with whatever you're eating for breakfast. So what I might recommend is actually just, you know, drinking your juice first, right? And then waiting an hour or two before you eat your breakfast. Like, it's extremely rare that I'll drink my juice and then I'll immediately eat my breakfast. I'll drink my juice first. I'll then go out and work in my garden, do online work or do something, work for a couple hours. Then when I feel hunger again, that's when I eat my breakfast, right? So, um, yeah, those are some things to try. Um, hope one of those helps you out. All right, next question is from uh, Green Earth 2262. Do you find the raw slash high raw uh, diet lead to isolation? So, you know, here's the thing. Like, I've always been pretty much a loner. Like, I didn't have a whole lot of friends in high school. I mean, I had some friends in college. We hung out and stuff. But I've always kind of been just a person that kept to myself and not like a super social person. This is probably good in some ways because I'm like in my head a lot. It's probably bad in other ways because maybe I could be more socialized and be nicer to people or something. I don't really know. <laughs> but um, so like, I don't know, to me, like the, the diet fits my lifestyle. And, and for me, because I just really don't want to be bothered most of the time. <laughs> so, 
So I don't know. Um, I think that it can lead to social isolation if you let it. There are ways to not be socially isolated. You know, if you go out, I mean, I don't drink, but if you go to bars, you know, you could just have water or sparkling water in there and be drinking and be social while other people are drinking their alcohol if you choose not to drink, right? If you go out to restaurants, you could always, you know, order off the menu and to get salads. Most places still sell salads. You could eat salads and still hang out with people. Um, you know, you could go to events such as, you know, fruit, fruit or raw food meetup groups and still have be socially social with people. You know, you could still go out with regular regular people that don't eat raw or vegan and just talk about things not having to do with diet. You know, I'm a single guy. So when I'm dating, it's not like I want to take him out to dinner because, number one, there's no places I would eat at in town. They're not raw vegan. All the vegan places just serve junk crap food. So I, I like when I go on a date, I'll go out to places that n that are not with food. Like, hey, let's go out to a show. Let's go miniature golfing. Let's go to an escape room. You know, let's go rock climbing at the indoor rock climbing place. Let's go to this new ninja gym that opened up. You know, I'm going to do things not around food. So like, I don't think it needs to be isolating unless you want it to be. Maybe you want it to be. Then what I would say is having some social skills and having community is very important. It's a big component of our health that the Surgeon General has been talking a lot about. So I would encourage you to have, you know, online communities that you join, people you talk to, people you connect with, uh, you know, regularly. Because I don't want you guys to be socially isolated due to your diet or for any other reason, right? Immediately, I would say rescue a pet. So actually, um, you, you know, you could be with your pet and have some community. All right, next question from JC2557. John, where do you get your amino acids? <laughs> My amino acids. That's a good question. So all the plants have amino acids, right? From my greens to my uh, different fruits and vegetables to the beans and rice I eat um, these days, mushrooms. I mean, everything has amino acids in there. So I eat a variety of fruits and vegetables for my amino acids. Some foods have more amino acids than others, especially select ones. And so that's why I really try to vary my diet and not just stick only to fruits and vegetables like I did do for many years. I also eat nuts and seeds, uh, seaweeds, um, beans and grains, mushrooms. I try to have a very diverse diet, you know, to make sure my body is getting as many amino acids as I need to. And then the other thing to remember is that our body can create our own you know there are essential amino acids and non-essential amino acids and if we eat the essential amino acids our bodies can manufacture the other non-essential amino acids so i mean my body makes some and i eat some in a nice varied diet is my answer all right next question is from cranky manx 8423 i would like to know your thoughts and if you have any good or bad info on nutritional use i've tried it twice before fortified and unfortified and it made me feel nauseous and gave me a headache. I then read that it's high in salicylate and just as bad or similar to consuming MSG and discovered other people also sensitive to it. All right, so my thoughts on nutritional use is like, when I first got into raw foods, I ate it, and then I basically totally discontinued it for a long time. I thought it was bad, and then I started eating it again. So, you know, my personal thoughts are number one, it does not contain MSG. It does have glutamate in it, which is, they say, monosodium glutamate. But that's not the same as glutamate, because glutamate is also in things like kombu seaweed, as well as tomatoes, as well as other foods. It's just an amino acid, actually. But when they make MSG, they hydrolyze it and do some chemical kind of crazy stuff to it to make it even more, you know, crazy. But it's that umami flavor, umami flavor. So, you know, I would say that nutritional yeast, you know, if you're getting an unfortified, I'm not a fan of fortified nutritional yeast. It does contain folic acid, which is not absorbed properly in our bodies compared to folate in foliage or greens and other plant foods. I'd also say that a lot of nutritional yeast may be made from genetically modified foodstuffs, which I'm not a fan of at all. And that may also cause problems. I would also say that, you know, some people are just sensitive to different foods, right? If you're raw vegan, only eating fruit, and then you eat some, like, herbs, you know, some strong herbs or something, then you, like, you know, you get a headache because of the herbs because it's, like, your body's not used to this food. So, 
you know, I believe nutritional yeast has some benefit. Am I dumping it on everything, eating it like religiously? No. Do I have it a couple times a week when I'm like, oh, this dressing would taste good if I had some cheesiness flavor when I blend up my, you know, whatever peppers with cashews and nutritional yeast with some balsamic vinegar in there or something? Yes. You know, do I put it in my soup sometimes because I want something to thicken the soup a little bit? To add a little bit of flavor yes do i get headaches no because i'm not like number one i'm not like just eating tons of it it's distributed evenly without in a recipe with plenty of other fruits and vegetables at the same time um yeah i mean i don't know i, I think that you need to figure out for yourself i believe there's some benefit to it as well as eating is basically a, a yeast so i think it's good also to help our microbiome. It also yeast that is non-active yeast. So I, I think these things are all can be good. And I think you don't while you don't necessarily need it, I think it kind of can make some food fun. And I think it can have some potential health benefits. It's, it's rich in B vitamins, because once again, it's, it's a product of a fermented food. Um, you know, so I, I think it's good overall. But hey, if your body doesn't agree with it, don't force yourself to eat it. However, I would recommend getting a good brand nutritional yeast. I get one from Germany. It's kind of hard to source. It's organic. Um, if you're just looking for a brand in the U.S. that's unfortified, I would recommend the Sari brand, S-A-R-I. All right, next question from a DR-VW8YU. Does eating green tomatoes have the same effect as eating leaves? So I don't know what effect you are looking for. Green tomatoes, that's a Solanaceae family plant, and generally Solanaceae family plants, uh, the leaves are not eaten. <laughs> they, they may contain toxins, although in some cultures they eat tomato leaves. Also, I've met a guy that was like uh, basically eating like goji berry microgreens, and that dude was way before his time, um, which also kind of a Solanaceae family plant. But I would say no, like greens and fruits generally have different nutrition in there. So I don't really know what effect you're, you're looking for, but I, I don't recommend eating green tomatoes myself. I'd recommend only eating them ripe. However, I do recommend eating greens in all different stages, whether younger or older. <laughs> They're all good. The next question is from uh, Raghead and 420 Roll. Does Oakley ever get to travel? So the answer is yes, yeah, sometimes. <laughs> like He's been to Texas before a couple times. He's been to the San Francisco Bay Area a couple times. In the past, he is getting it more mature these days. He is 13 years young, and uh, you know he may be going to LA really soon. And he's been to plenty of trips to LA. And uh, it's sad that in LA County, most beaches don't allow dogs, but we go to the dog Rosie's Dog Beach in Long Beach. He likes that. He likes going to the Dog Beach. Um, and he does. He likes to stay in hotels. All right. Last question is from Joe Man. How much aloe vera to consume per day? One cup, half cup, how often, every day, every other day? Is it okay for long periods of time? Any answers to questions would be great, thanks. All right, Joe. So I did visit the Aloe Experts at the Stockton Aloe One. Link down below to my video for that. Uh, I think it's on my gardening channel where I discuss eating aloe vera. So, you know, it depends. You talk about aloe vera to consume per day. So if, you, if you're growing the aloe yourself, or if you buy it in the store and then you fillet it and then you double soak it twice and you remove all that, what is it, alanin content, it's that like yellow sap stuff, right? You could, you could eat like six to eight ounces, like two to three times a day without a problem. Like I would see that's not even a problem for doing that. If you're just drinking aloe vera juice, just like pasteurized juice in a bottle where they basically don't remove that much alanin content, it could have like diuretic effects and really not be healthy. I, I would definitely not eat that much. I think if you're eating, you should not be eating the skin and that yellow sap because then you, you should not eat that much because that could be really bad. It's actually kind of inflammatory, but the inner gel is actually healing. So, I mean, that's what I'd tell you. I'd say six to eight ounces, two to three times a day if you're properly you know, uh, filleting it and then washing it properly. Link down below to my video. I think it has over a million views now on my Growing Your Greens channel where I discuss this further. I would say that yes, it is okay for long periods of time provided you're removing that yellow sap content, you know, like, like 
leafy greens, like aloe vera is a leafy green. It's literally like, kind of like a succulent green to eat, although it's not green because you're filleting it. Um, but yeah, I think it's just like lettuce and I would like to eat it more. So I have a lot of aloe vera growing and I probably should harvest it more and eat it myself. So maybe I'll get to do that here really soon. But yeah, I think it all comes down to priorities in life. What, what's important to you, you know? I mean, for me, one of the main things, priorities for me are to have high quality food. That's why I grow a garden. And also another priority to me is to prepare the food in the best ways possible to maximize its nutrition. And hopefully these are also priorities to you. And I would encourage you guys, like I, I really don't eat processed food. Like, I see so many people just getting takeout or the lines at, like, you know, In-N-Out Burger or fast food joints. Just, like, people are lazy. Like, I mean, this is my life. I take the time to grow my food to prepare pretty much every single meal I eat at home. So, yeah. Hope you guys uh, do that also. And if you guys enjoyed this episode, the Q&A today, hey, please be sure to give this a big thumbs up. More importantly, share this with other people you feel that would be blessed to hear the knowledge that I share. Also, if you have a question, make sure you click the link down below to my community tab where you guys can post your question that may appear in next month's Q&A. Also, be sure to click that subscribe button right down below so you don't miss my new and upcoming episodes. I have a command every five to seven days. You never know where I'll show up or what you'll be learning on my YouTube channel. And make sure you click the little bell so you get notified as many of you subscribe. And finally, be sure to check the past episodes. The past episodes are Wolf of Knowledge. Over 800 episodes at this time dedicated to you guys all about eating a nutrient-dense, fruit and vegetable-dominated, plant-based diet. So with that, my name is John Kohler with OKRaw.com. We'll see you next time. And until then, remember, keep eating your fresh fruits and vegetables. They're always the best.